Hi everybody and welcome to Josiah is Right and I'm going to talk about some Exo Squad figures today and a little bit of background on some characters. If it's your first time here be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and thumbs up and comment which Exo Squad figure do you like the best. But let's start with one of my all-time favorite toys and one of my newest purchases. Exo Squad character profile Marsala. Oh Marsala how I love you. Let me count the ways. But first your character profile. Marsala voiced by Gary Chalk is a member of Able Squad and pilots a rapid assault E-frame or should I say co-pilots, as he pilots along with Nara Burns. Marsala is defined by his connection to others and his gentle demeanor. He is the brother or broodmate of Phaeton. Marsala led the original Neo-Sapien revolt half a century before the events of the show. In fact, it was Phaeton who betrayed him as he was captured by a future admiral, then E-frame pilot named Winfield. Marsala's original revolt was driven by justice, as is his battling against his own people. He fought for his own people's freedom, and later the freedom of the now essentially enslaved mankind. In being the outsider in Able Squad, who frankly doesn't fully understand humanity, he becomes the proxy for the audience as we learn about the nature of this world and the people in it as he does. Marsala becomes especially close to JT and of course to his co-pilot, Nara Burns. He becomes a father figure to Nara and in turn learned to be more human because of their connection. After the war, Marsala entered the world of politics to help foster a better future for his people. While you guys were watching and I tried and I can't find the missile for this thing. So I wanted to show you this one first because first of all, it still has its very loud functioning sound effects. You can see here, it is the two seater, which is awesome. As a kid, this was the one that I most wanted that I never got. I really, really wanted this toy. I just never got it. it I guess it was, it was on me because I could probably get more value. Like I could get, two smaller ones for the price of this, even though it's probably not exactly that. But I got this one at Kelly's Toy Stop in Huntington Beach, California at uh, Old World Village. And it came with the original box with the schematics. So uh, I will cut to some shots of that of with this guy here. And it lights up. Great, great find. It has most of the things pretty much intact. I think it has all the missiles, a few excess, uh, I have a few extra missiles that they gave me. But the reason I wanted to start with this, even though it's my newest one, it's sort of the fulfillment of childhood wishes. Like, I'll show you in a second the one that's most sort of special and important to me, but this is number two. This is the one I always wanted. This was just, and in the show I love the character of Marsala. I love the design of this machine and just everything about it. So I'm glad to finally have this one in my collection. But as I said, this is number two on the specialness meter. Uh, number one, and we're, I'm going to do this by series as well, so we're starting with series one, is Alec de Leon. Now you can see here, Alec has been through the ringer, quite a bit through the ringer. And before we show you the toy, let's talk about the man inside the E-frame, Alec de Leon. Exo Squad character profile, Alec de Leon. Alec de Leon is my favorite toy and among my favorite characters. He pilots a spy logistics field communications E-frame. Being that de Leon was voiced by John Payne, as a kid, he was kind of a pain as a bit of a Parisian Aladdin. Because of that street rap background, Alec became the James Bond of the group. As much as the show and the war would allow it, Alec actually had a relationship with Maggie Weston, the other techie on the team. Although in the future in space, I think everyone's a techie. In one of the most significant moments in my personal television watching history, Alec died. Killed by Typhonus, liberating the moon with a group of jump troops. I was shocked when it happened, it still gives me chills to think about. Although he is brought back as a clone in the end, somewhat diminishing the impact of his death. So here is Alec de Leon as we learn a bit about him. You can see here, it's missing the missile here that was I think like the one that looked like a satellite dish. It's missing two of the bottom missiles. The, the, the bottom parts of this are broken. This is in pretty sorry shape. I think it had multiple antenna, antennae here and they're all gone. And they're all probably in the woods behind my mom and dad's house because that's where these got played with. And the reason I have all the stuff from Marcella is because I bought it as an adult, whereas the stuff I had for kids, something is missing on everything because they were played with. These were like the last toys I truly played with and they were put through the ringer of adventure in a good way, not a bad way. Although I do wish I had the missiles still. Could probably go in the woods and do a little, uh, rake some leaves and excavate and you would find some probably a lot of gi joe a lot of random things but that's why this is my favorite it's the first one i got in the line this is the first exo squad toy i got uh the color green if you ask my daughter penny what's dad's favorite color green 
from that alone, I'm gonna be gra I'm gonna gravitate towards this one rather. So that's why this is such an awesome special figure to me. Now I'm gonna show you one that's probably my least favorite that I have in the line, but I'll show you in a second uh, with the rest of the line that he does complete the line. And who's this guy's name? Typhonus, high speed Typhonus. I do love that it's like the high speed one, but these are like the Stormtrooper E-frames. You know, you would see tons and tons of these attacking the uh, Able Squad and I just never cared for it. Even in the show, it was like my least favorite design. It's very alien-like and buggy, which I mean, that's the, the, the Neo Sapien stuff is in general more so, but it doesn't work for me. But first, let's talk about the Neo Sapien inside the E-frame. Typhonus? I keep forgetting his name. He was cool in the show though. Let's learn about him. Exo Squad character profile Typhonus. Minister of Neo Sapien Battle Forces. Typhonus was voiced by Rob Morton and piloted a high speed stealth E frame. My personal least favorite E frame. Typhonus was the Neo Sapien military leader, but he was also Phaeton's lackey, which led to tension between the two in the series. Really from the start, as Phaeton never trusted him and had a warehouse full of Typhonus clones at the ready. Typhonus messed up and basically caused the pirates to align with Exofleet when they had previously decided not to. After that, Phaeton had him executed. Maybe also before that, I'm not sure. Phaeton then resurrected him multiple times. He finally, finally died when he died after killing Alec de Leon. And so once again, missing missiles probably at my parents. The little missiles here, there's, there's two, but there is not the ones on this side. So unfortunately, the woods of Western Pennsylvania by my parents' house where they still live, they're out there. I used to go out, walk around with my dog and play with my Exo Squad figures. And I have the next two, because to me, these two are just, I mean, right? This, 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 flying at each other. But we're gonna start with the most interesting villain in all of early 90s cartoons, maybe next to Magneto. Phaeton. Exo Squad character profile, Phaeton. Once Chief Delegate of the United Martian Commonwealth and eventual Governor General of the Neo Sapien Commonwealth, Phaeton was voiced by Richard Newman. He piloted a mobile land and air command E frame. He and Marcel are broodmates, considered brothers as they are essentially created in the same batch of Neo Sapiens. I'm not trying to be flippant, that's just what happened. They led the first revolt 50 years before the events of the show. That war was a fight for freedom from slavery and probably could have been its own series. But the second was purely a mad grab for power by Phaeton. As chief delegate, he manipulated the Exo Fleet into going to battle against the pirates. This left the homeworlds vulnerable. You can't look at Phaeton and ignore the historical precedent of Adolf Hitler, himself a veteran of a previous war, the First World War. He then radicalizes people and militarizes them to strike vulnerable neighbors. The culmination of the first season of the show was an epic throwdown with Phaeton and JT Marsh. Phaeton was messed up and developed the Neo Sapien Automutation Syndrome. This sent him more into insanity. In an effort to be their best selves, the Neo Sapiens created the Neo Megas and a bunch of other craziness. That's all for another video. The Neo Megas saw Phaeton as a threat to all of existence. Therefore, they were a threat to him and he had all but one executed. There's also a whole bunch of drama with generals and cloning and killing the original guy and using his clone, but that's its own video or series of videos. In another World War II parallel, Phaeton controlled his public appearances to hide his health issues, much like FDR hid his polio. In the end, Phaeton's madness drove his decisions and hurt the Neo Sapien war effort. After another battle with Marsh and Able Squad, Nera Burns killed him. Even dead, he wasn't dead, as he had a clone, of course. A clone that brought up the question if you could travel in time and kill baby Hitler, do you do it? Or maybe baby Thanos? That's horrible. So you have here the Phaeton E frame. Again, this is like my preferred sort of of the uh, Neo Sapien E frame because it's. I don't know, just seems more damaging. I always love this feature that it can do that. The missiles are totally gone. I don't think I have any missiles because this one doesn't fire. So nothing is here. This is all gone to the woods. You know, it's and it, and I haven't really talked about it, but the great design of these toys, the way like the hydraulics can pump on the legs, the way that this would shoot the missile on this side and on this side, this pumps the, the claws. It's such a great design. You can see some stickers that came off on here. The way this can come up and go back down. He's his little chip thing that communicates with the back of their skull. That's missing on the back. A lot of stuff's missing on this one because he probably crashed a lot 
suffering at the hands of JT Marsh. So let's take a look at the man inside the E-frame, the leader of Able Squad, JT Marsh. Exo Squad character profile, JT Marsh. JT Marsh is the leader of leaders, and specifically the leader of Able Squad, and he is voiced by Robbie Benson, who is also the voice of Beast in Disney's groundbreaking animated classic Beauty and the Beast. What an era for all kinds of animation. Marsh pilots an aerial attack E-frame, essentially an E-frame with wings, which is awesome. Marsh is the kind of person who, forgive the cliche, but he is a born leader. In part because he doesn't want to be one. Marsh is a thoughtful and caring person who gets the best out of the people around him because he invests in them and cares for them. At the beginning of the series, Marsh battles the pirate clan. His actions, which are in the interest of his team, get him charged with mutiny and sent to prison. That's how the show starts. He even has a romantic relationship with Jump Troop Colleen O'Reilly. Although, due to the whole intergalactic war thing, it was a bit of a strained relationship. However, it was never meant to be, even after the war, as Colleen was a soldier through and through, and Marsh had enough of war. In the first season's penultimate battle, Marsh severely injures Phaeton. Throughout the course of the series, it was really Marsh and his interaction with those various parties, the Earth and Venus Resistance, the pirate clans, and the fleet itself, that brought them all together to eventually win the war. So JT Marsh, you can see here, I can't even um, risk doing this because if you raise these missiles too, with these wings too high, these missiles will shoot out, so. Did they both go? No, that one didn't go. So that missile is jammed, that missile fired out. But you can see the way his, I guess that's the, the high level when they raise up. Uh, he is also again missing, actually he's missing less when you look at him. He, he's in better shape than uh, everyone else, I think, in terms of accessories that are still on him. I'm sure there's missing pieces here and there, but like, these guys are still here. Oh, there's, I think a, like, there should be matching sort of turret things. So only got one there. It's just such a great, uh, I don't know. It looks to me like it's, it's silly, but this looks like the most practical because it has wings probably makes no sense, but that's me applying my kid logic. And again, this was uh, probably the second one that I purchased. And then I got, so I got Alec. And I got him, and I think I got Phaeton at the same time, or right around the same time, because I remember a lot of the time then it was those two sort of going against each other, and Alec going to do something else, and you know, however I would play. But they got a lot of play. And again, you can you can see that here. But he is in pretty good condition, considering uh, how much should be missing. Wait, this, this one rotates. Does this fire differently? No, it doesn't. But again, he is in great shape, considering the adventures in the woods in Western Pennsylvania that he went on. Now, we're gonna take a look. I messed up, I think, on which series we're on because I am not sure which series this guy comes on, but we have the police enforcer, Sean Napier. Now, this is another one I got later. I got a really good deal on eBay on this. I can't even remember what it was, but the cool thing was, after the fact, the woman that I purchased it from randomly sent me a letter and a note with some guns, like a, like the little handguns and stuff to go for him. And I don't have any of that for the rest of my guys, unfortunately, maybe one or two, but that was all definitely lost to me. And this one, because it came from her, uh, or however she acquired it, it was in pretty complete condition, more complete than probably any of my others except for Marsala. So let's take a look at the cop inside this police bike looking one, Sean Napier. Exo Squad character profile, Sean Napier. Sean Napier is voiced by John Payne. He is himself a bit of a pain, and that's a joke I've used before, as he was initially an E-frame pilot and a part of Exo Fleet, but was kicked out for his bad attitude. Napier's backstory is where things get really heavy. He's an alcoholic divorced Chicago cop. Cops in the Exo Squad universe, they pilot E-frames, a police enforcer model specifically. Did I mention he's a racist? Before the Neo Sapien War, he saved then Chief United Martian Common with Delegate Phaeton but he refuses to shake Phaeton's hand because he's a Neo-Sapien. Did this guy cause the entire war? After the Neo-Sapiens conquered Earth, he was captured. He eventually escaped and formed the Chicago Resistance. Napier, who seemed to love to hold a grudge, blamed the Exofleet for abandoning the homeworlds. He wasn't wrong. Eventually, he learned to be less of a pain and worked more with Able Squad and Exofleet. After the war, he even learned to see Neo-Sapiens as beings of value, working with Marsala to help the two sides reconcile. So here is the Sean Napier E-frame. It's 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 probably my least favorite of them, but it, it's a different like look and purpose. I guess I just don't like the way the arms work. And like I said right before the little uh, character profile, it it looks like a police bike driving, which is cool in terms of design. But I love that you know that 
that mech thing where you stick your arm and you're controlling it with the arm. Whereas this is more like he's inside a robot as opposed to something that's more of a suit. So that's why he's not my favorite uh, in terms of that. I love the character in the show. I love the way he's, you know, in the resistance and all that and how it starts out. And there's so much, it's amazing character de development in this show. Unlike most things from the early nineties, it's a really brilliant show and brilliant toys. It is cool though, like you have the hydraulics that are flipped. So they're on the front here, little things like that. But I still gotta say, it's just my least favorite. And also because of those arms, it doesn't sit on the shelf next to the other ones well, it creates this weird space next to them, so. And I, again, I think I lost track of which series, but I know this one comes from the Space series, and it is Thrax. So let's take a look at the man behind the E-frame ship. Exosquad character profile, Thrax. Thrax, voiced by, I don't know. He was voiced by somebody and it's not on IMDb. But wait, I actually found it on BehindTheVoiceActors.com. So Thrax is voiced by Paul Dobson. I'm glad I now know who voiced the character because it's a nuanced and fine performance. Anyway, he was an E-frame pilot who flew a Neo Fighter Y-Wing. In another historical reference, he's totally the Red Baron and even defeats ace pilot of Able Squad, Kaz Takagi. In that moment, Thrax showed the depth and maturity of the show by not killing Takagi, stating there had already been enough killing. Later, when Venus was clearly going to be taken, Thrax ignored orders, refusing to detonate a bomb to protect the innocent civilians. He was arrested by Draconis, but was later released when Phaeton had Draconis arrested. So another one from my childhood, another one that was well played with. I love the way this one can sit. So as a kid, I wanted Kaz Takagi, and am I saying it right? I think I am. And so I never got that one, unfortunately. And I was able to get this one. This was sort of the compromise piece to get a cool, because I wanted one of the ships, one of the ones that was more like a ship. And I was lucky enough to get this one and I like it, but I still, if, if, you, if you said I'd trade you that one for this one today, I would probably do it. At PowerCon, where I got to meet Larry Houston, who worked uh, on this show, uh, someone else was selling that ship. I was so tempted to buy it, but I bought a few other things, so you gotta make those choices. We can't buy everything. Or can you? But that uh, this guy is pretty cool. Like things like battle damage, and that one battle damage. That one flies off a little bit better. And then these rise up, and these missiles will shoot. There's there's just so much movement to these. So many uh, features that just function, which is such a cool thing for a toy. It's, you know, very similar to like this could be like this line could be. Uh, I posted this on a Facebook group about mask that this could almost be mask in the future, really the way they are and the similar size and everything. It just kind of feels like it has that similar vibe of technology and functionality, but with cooler machines even and mask is pretty cool. So let's take a look at the last two small things I have in the collection. Maybe in some ways my favorites, the jump troops. So we have Avery Butler, who I believe is the captain, commander, leader of those guys, and his boots obviously fell off, and Vince Pellegrino, it's like a wine. Let's take a look at these guys, starting with Avery Butler. Exo Squad character profile, Avery Butler. Avery Butler, voiced by Alvin Sanders, is the leader of Charlie Company, a team of Exo Squad jump troops. Jump troops are a bit akin to the soldiers in Starship Troopers, the book, not the movie. And the jump troops technically wore ultralight E-frames. These guys are your frontline marines. And Captain Butler might remind you of another guy. They were both influenced by the actual Charlie Company, made famous by a 1970 television documentary, The World of Charlie Company. He was the tough but firm leader and true man of action. The best display of his character and the level of depth of the show came in his profile segment, narrated by Admiral Winfield, where the Admiral noted that Butler said the hardest part of the job was sending messages to the families of the dead. Beyond that, Due to the war, the messages could not be sent to the family, yet he still recorded every one of them. Powerful stuff. And now let's take a look at Vince Pellegrino. I think I'm saying it right. Exo Squad character profile, Vince Pellegrino. Voiced by David Kay. As you can tell just by looking at his hair, he had quite a hot temper and a lot of attitude, but he's also a goofball from a long line of soldiers. Like his captain, Palangrino was a jump troop in an ultralight E-frame. He was the rifle squad leader and known for his precision skills. 
His attitude once got him in a fight with everyone's favorite hothead from Evil Squad and toy I second most wanted as a kid but still want as an adult, Wolf Bronski. When Bronski referred to the jump troops as jump troops. Pellegrino was close to Gunnery Sergeant Ramon Longfeather, who was a soulful and thoughtful peace-loving man, really Pellegrino's opposite, yet closest friend. You can see he still has his boots, his like jump boot things, he's missing his shoulder piece, every he's missing a lot. He looks it because it makes him look a little bit funky in the armor without like especially the shoulders, I think, and the, the chest stuff and uh, part of it he only has one leg thing, he's missing the missile that goes in here. But it's still a cool uh, figure. Uh, these are, in the show, were just so powerful. It felt like these were the guys that they send them in to die. And it really felt that way. You felt this dread every time that they jumped and there was that tension before the jump. The show did such a great job with that and developing these characters in such a great way. And here we have this guy. He is much more complete. I, I just love the bulkiness of his boots and everything. It's like the power move guy here. And he's actually also a water gun. So you put water in here and it'll squirt water. And uh, I don't really ever remember using it as a kid. I'm sure I tested it, but not frequently because I didn't want to like spray all the other toys even as a kid. Even though I was losing pieces in the woods, I did have my limits. Uh, he has... I think everything on his armor because he's got the shoulder pads, he's got his belt, he's missing the belt. It seems, well, he, I mean, it might be different because you can see the function here. His backpack functions differently than his wings. But regardless, great toys and really gave depth to the show and the line of toys. And it was great as a kid because I could afford this more likely than, I probably, I, I'm pretty sure I bought two of these at the same time. It was that same logic wow, I can get two guys for the price of one E-frame. And I was a really big fan of these characters and how they function and what they did in the show, so it made sense. So that is it for what I have for ExoSquad. Nothing else is hiding around here. So thank you for stopping by. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment what's your favorite, what should I get and add to my collection. Maybe I'll have a video about that coming up. Thanks. Bye.